Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Chakwadash. Yahweh is the name of Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in, Hada, Sham, name, Yahweh Shai, being able to be God's Son. All right, meaning He delivers, He saves. Chakwadash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles, that was great, most of them well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball. All right, back at it again with another lesson, another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shai. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And, you know, we have to make a diligent search for wisdom, man. Okay, for the wisdom of Yahweh by Shema Shai, when you search after it diligently, you will be rewarded. Proverbs 2 and 3, it says, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. That's right. So just like how you would diligently search for treasure and riches, you know, we have to seek for wisdom that much more. Then we're going to understand the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And find the knowledge of the Most High. That's right. All right. Let's get a precept real quick. Because true knowledge is from these scriptures. Psalms 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. That's right. So the fear of the Lord is where wisdom comes from. Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. That's it. So Ecclesiastes 1 and 14, to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. That's right. So the faithful, the elect, they've always had, you know, they've been born with the Holy Spirit. Okay? They've been born to be chosen to Yahweh Bashmashai. Like the Lord said in Jeremiah, how he ordained Jeremiah a prophet into the nations from his mother's womb. All right. Also in the book of Psalms says how our substance was not hid from the Lord, you know. Before we came forth in our mother's belly, the Lord knew us, roughly paraphrasing. And I was also said about Yahweh Shai and John the Baptist that they were born, born of the Holy Spirit. Meaning what? That they were ordained from the womb to receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, so Ecclesiastes 1 and 20, the root of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Right. So what are the roots of a tree? It's the beginning of a tree. So the beginning of the fear of the Lord comes from or the beginning of wisdom comes from the fear of the Lord. It says, in the branches thereof are long life. Yeah, that's the fruit of it. Okay. Let me see. There's another precept that I'm thinking. I think it's in Job. Job 28 and 28, it says, And unto the man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. That's it, man. Okay. Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and, instru and instruction. All right. Proverbs 15 to 33, it says the fear of the Lord is instruction, is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. That's it. Okay. So that's the point. You know, if you fear the Lord, you're going to receive that wisdom. But we have to search diligently after Yahweh Bashmah Shai. Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That's right. So if you're asking the Lord for more wisdom, he's going to give it to you liberally. If you seek it diligently, you will find it. If you knock for those doors or opportunity, opportunity of wisdom to open up, it's going to be opened unto you through the Spirit. Okay? Verse 8. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. That's right, man. So when you diligently search after the wisdom of Yahweh you will obtain it if it is, you know, your lot. Okay? Proverbs 25 and 2. It is the glory of the Most High to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. That's right. So, you know, 
us being kings and priests, all right, we are a royal priesthood. We have to search out the wisdom of Yahweh Hashem Shai diligently. Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's right. So if you lack faith, it's impossible for you to please the Lord. It says, for he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if you diligently seek after the Lord, you diligently search after this wisdom, the Lord will reward you. Okay. So Ecclesiastes 39 and 1, it says, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out all the wisdom of the, all the will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. That's right. So those who are truly in the spirit, they're going to be seeking out wisdom. Okay. And wisdom will make herself known unto them. You know, the scriptures speak about how you're supposed to lie in wait for wisdom. Let me get that precept. I think it's in Sirach. Well, it is in Sirach, but, um, here it is. So Ecclesiastes 14, starting at verse 20, blesses the man that doth meditate good things in wisdom and that reasoneth of holy things by his understanding. He that considereth her ways in his heart shall also have understanding in her secrets. That's right. So if you're constantly meditating upon the scriptures of the Lord, you're going to be revealed things in the spirit, man. Go after her as one that traceth and lie and wait in her ways. That's right. And I love that scripture because... You know, just like how you see a fine woman, right? You know, and you, you want to holler at her, okay? But, you know, you see her from a distance or she might be walking away from you or something like that. You'll track her steps, you know? That way you could just simultaneously run into her and be like, oh, hey, how you doing? So it's the same thing in this truth. You got to you gotta follow after wisdom, man. You got to stalk wisdom, <laughs> you know, in, in a righteous sense, Okay? So that's the point right there. You know, you got to be hungry for this truth, man. All right. Just like how you would want to, you know, follow a woman or, you know, run into a woman. Same way you got to do with this wisdom. Okay. So Ecclesiastes 39 and 1, it says, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. That's right. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and he will be and be conversing in dark parables. Right. Because you're going to be learning them scriptures. You're going to be learning them breakdowns because you're diligently seeking out to the wisdom of the Lord. And we're instructed to do so as the Lord instructed our forefathers. We are instructed to do so. OK, let's get some precepts on that. First Chronicles 16. Verse 10, glory ye in his name. Let the heart of them re rejoice that seek the Lord. Okay, so your heart will rejoice if you seek the Lord diligently. Verse 11, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. And how do we seek the face of Yahweh Through these scriptures, through the wisdom of the Lord. All right, let's get another one. First Chronicles 22. Verse 19, it says, now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord, your power. Arise, therefore, and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord power to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of the most high into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. That's right. And even though this applies to what happened in the past. Now, you know, we're spiritually building up that house, man. OK, and your house shot. He, he spiritually represents the ark of the covenant. So we have to set our heart and our souls to seek after Yahweh Basham Shai with all our hearts, man. Okay, and we have to build up this third temple. When we make up the building blocks of that temple through the spirit. Okay. First Chronicles 28 and 9, it says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the power of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. That's right. And how do you know the most high? How do you know Yahweh Basham Shai? By keep, by fearing him. OK, keeping his commandments, you know, first John two and four goes into that following after the scriptures. All right. And it says, for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. That's right. And that's what happens for a lot of dudes. They forsake the Lord and the Lord cast them away. They fall out the faith, man. All right. But as the scriptures say, 
We are persuaded better things of you, things that accompany salvation. So we hope to be of that elect number. All right. Uh, let's get another precept. Let's go to the book of Second Chronicles. The 15th chapter. Second verse. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. That's right. Okay, so as long as you with the Lord, the Lord is going to be with you. All right, it says, and if you seek him, he will be found to you. Right, like we read earlier back in Matthew 7. I want to show you that the Old Testament and the New Testament, they, they correlate with each other. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. That's right. And that's why we have to continually seek Yahweh Bashmashai's face so that the Lord doesn't forsake us. We got to continually pray to the Lord, ask the Lord to take not his Holy Spirit away from us, man. All right. Second Chronicles 15 and 12, it says, And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the power of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul, that whosoever would not seek the Lord, power of Israel, should be put to death. And that's why a lot of our people are getting ready to die. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge, man. Yeah, they lack the knowledge of the Lord and they don't seek the Lord in his face in these latter days while they yet have opportunity. So when all hell breaks loose, that's when they're going to want to seek after the most high. That's when they're going to want to get right with the Lord. But it's going to be too late, man. Verse 13. Read that again, man. That's heavy right there, man. Second Chronicles 15 and 13. It says that whosoever would not seek the Lord power of Israel should be put to death. Whether small or great, whether man or woman. Okay? So the Lord is not a respecter of persons, man. All right? If you don't seek him, you're going to be destroyed. Plain and simple. So we are, we, we are commanded to seek the Lord. If we want to live. All right? This is a Ezra 8. And verse um, 22. It says, For I was ashamed... To require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our power is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. You see? So, hey, that's heavy right there. You know, basically he was like, I just told the king that the Lord going to be with us if we seek him, you know, and he's going to be against them that uh, forsake him. Like we've read in these past couple of precepts. So he was like, listen, I got to be a man of my word and trust on the Lord. Okay. So, hey, that's the point right there. We have to seek Yahweh Basham Shai. It's commanded of us, man. Let's go further into 2 Chronicles 7 and uh, 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. And that's what we need to do. That way, how about may have mercy upon us. Hear our cries, hear our prayers and heal us, man. OK, but we must seek him first. Second Chronicles 12. And it's a daily it's a daily process of seeking the Lord. It ain't just, you know, one day you felt like seeking the Lord and the next day you feel like going back into the world and seeking after wickedness. You have to do a diligent search for Yahweh Shemashiach day in and day out. Second Chronicles uh, 12 and 14. It says, and he did evil. Who did who did evil? OK. I believe it's going into a uh, real bone. All right. And we actually started 13. Second Chronicles 12 and 13. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. For Rehoboam was one and 40 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem in the city which the Lord had chosen out of the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naamah and Ammonitus. And he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. That's right. So to not seek after Yahweh Bashmashai, to go after some other way. Is evil. All right. Let me get this real quick. To forsake the Lord is evil, man. Jeremiah 2 and 13, it says. For my people have committed two evils. 
What's the first one? They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And what's the second one? And hew them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So pretty much the Lord is saying we forsook him and we also made idol gods that don't have any spiritual water. All right. That water represents the truth, the spirit. Those idol gods are falsehood, vanity. OK, so forsaking the Lord was one evil and following after idols was another. Jeremiah 2 and 19, thine old wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy power, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord, power of hosts. That's right. So it's a, it's a very wicked thing to forsake the Lord. All right. Um, that was the point on that precept. Let's go to uh, 2 Chronicles 19. Because the opposite, the opposite of searching is what? Forsaking, not looking. Second Chronicles 19 and 3. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and has prepared thine heart to seek the most high. You see? So that's what we need to do. Okay? We need to prepare our hearts and seek up the Yahweh Mashai all the days of our life. We have to be mindful of the Lord all the days of our life. Scripture speak about how the Lord's people have forgotten him days without number. We can't do that, man. Imagine you had a woman, right? You guys just hitting it off. And then one day she just never texted you back. And that was your woman. It wasn't like an Eve that you were just, you know, just getting to know. All right. It was an Eve that you were locked in with, made covenants with. And then one day she just stopped hitting you up. You know, stopped contacting you altogether. Forgot about you days without number. That ain't right, man. Okay? And we are the Lord's woman. Second Chronicles 31 and 21, it says, And in every work that he began in the service of the house of the Most High and in the law and in the commandments to seek his power, he did it with all his art and prospered, man. That's right. Okay? And just like Hezekiah did that, we ought to, we ought to do that as well. Because we'll prosper if we seek out the Yahweh Shemoshai in all of our ways. Okay? He tells you that in the book of Joshua, the first chapter, Tobit, the fourth chapter, you know, many other precepts goes into that. Let's get some scriptures on it. Joshua 1 and 7, it says, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Right. Prosper by doing what? By keeping the ways of the Lord. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That's right. Deuteronomy 29 and 9, keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. That's right. So if you follow after Yahweh Shemoshai, you're going to prosper. Okay. Let's get another one. First Chronicles 22 and 13, it says, Then shalt thou prosper if thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Be strong and of a good courage, dread not, nor be dismayed. That's right. Um, but if you don't seek the Lord, you're not going to prosper. I know there's another precept where it, uh, here's a good one. Second Chronicles 20, 20 and 20, it says, and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and, sit, stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your power, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. That's right. Because the prophets speak the word of the Lord. Okay. We read Second Chronicles 31. I know there's another precept where it basically says, you know, how, uh, mm. 
Basically, there was another scripture where it talks about like another uh, a man of the Lord seeking after the Lord, and he, not, he uh, became mighty. All right, I think it was Jotham, but um, this is a good one right here, Tobit, chapter four, and verse five. My son, be mindful of the Lord our power all thy days, and let not thy will be set to sin, or to transgress His commandments. Do uprightly all thy life long, and follow not the ways of unrighteousness. For if thou deal truly, thy doings shall prosperously succeed to thee, and to all them that live justly. That's right. Okay. So that's the point on that precept right there, man. And this is what we're commanded to do. And it's only for our benefit at the end of the day. The Lord don't need us. We need him, man. Psalms, 19, Psalms 9 and verse 10, it says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. Let me start actually at verse nine psalms 99 the lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in time of troubles all right in times of trouble and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee for thou lord has not forsaken them that seek thee that's right so if you continually seek out the lord he won't forsake you but if you forsake him he will forsake you job 8 and 5 it says if thou wouldest seek unto the most high be times be times meaning early so you, you want to seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek him early. Okay? Let me get this real quick. Psalms 32 and 6, it says, For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. That's right, because a lot of people think that the, this is just this truth is going to be easily accessible forever. No, eventually the Lord is going to remove his, his prophets off the street. He's going to take the videos off the internet. Okay? And there's going to be a famine of the word and the Lord is going to hide himself even more. All right. So that's why we need to seek him while he may be found. It says, surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. That's right. So when the martial law troops come in, the, the adversity comes through. Yahweh Bashmashah is going to protect his elect. Job 8 and 5, it says, if thou would have seek unto the most high be times and make thy supplication to the almighty. Right. Isaiah 55 and 6 also goes into that. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Right. And said, so if thou were pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Thou, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. That's right. And that's what the Lord is getting ready to do for his elect. Everything that we had to sacrifice on this side, we're going to get it back a hundredfold in the kingdom of heaven. OK. And, you know, just like how we came in. With a certain amount of talents in this truth, when we first got in, we we knew a little bit. Hey, in our latter end, as long as we endure, I brought desire. We're gonna greatly increase, man. We're gonna multiply those talents. Verse eight: For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. That's right, and that's what we need to do. We need to search. We need to search for our heavenly Father first and foremost. Okay, and we also search out, you know, the the, the things of our of the ancients, man. The things of our forefathers, man. So we got to continually do a diligent search for the wisdom of Yahweh Bashmashai. So I brought this out as lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Bashem, Bashem, Chakradaj, Devon, our Apostle, Elders, Great Muslim, Never Will. Peace and blessings to Israel. Shalom and Ababa.